any other fond memories i love that they are just coming flashing <laughs> back as we are trying to continue and then you're like oh let me remember let me remember something would you from, like for me to talk about politics uh, i mean in campus yeah yeah oh yes okay. oh yes you have the experience i would love for you to 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 to, to so you to s- you said we'll talk about it later let, so later let us, now this is campus okay yeah. this is your experience in campus so yes. yeah so um just before i cleared campus mm-hmm. I discovered that what I had been doing for the four years was politics. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I decided to get into a political party because I wanted to run for office in 2007 mm-hmm. in my constituency. Mm-hmm. So I got into a political party. Mm-hmm. I won't say which one. <laughs> It's okay. It was 2007. You can mention. <laughs> So, mm-hmm. I served the party within the Youth League. Mm-hmm. And I was elected the National Director of Elections for the Youth League. Okay. And I was so keen on becoming member of parliament and I used to be such a dreamer. And anything I ever dreamt of doing or becoming, I did and I succeeded from first year to fourth year. I had I don't think I'd ever experienced failure yeah in my aspirations and so i didn't have plan b all i knew is i wanted to become a member of parliament and make a change in my community i had plans i didn't have a plan b that what if i fail or what if this doesn't happen so i served the party for one year then got to declare he I thought got to declare MP interest. Yes. Mm-hmm. I thought student politics had prepared me sufficiently for national politics. I discovered I hadn't even scratched the surface. Tell me about it. Hey. And this is uh, national politics but also um, your area politics. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So challenges started cropping up. You're just a young girl. You've just cleared school. You're not even married. How much money do you have? You're a woman. You know this and that. Oh man, I I still kept pushing on. I still kept pushing on and by then I was also the Western Region um coordinator for the uh, youth policy, the steering committee, mm-hmm. overseeing the dissemination. So I thought, you know what? I had I have some networks mm. of young people within the region. Oh. Discouragement after discouragement, you know issue after issue and being reminded sort of where you belong you know how much money do you have you, you you're a woman have you ever seen a woman being elected in in this region and you know so of course time came when i dropped out of the rest i didn't even get to the nomination stage mm. and for that period i felt so shattered i felt i did like i said i didn't have a plan b I felt shattered. I felt I, I didn't know what else to do. But at that point I then said, "Oh, then politics is not my thing." So I quit politics, quit the party. Um and was down for a couple of months still trying to figure out so what do I do? And I remember my dad telling me, "You see, politics a lot of times is for people who've retired. So you have your career, go into the media, work and then in future you can run um but it took me time this was my first experience with failure oh man it it was it was crazy um i was down for a long time then picked myself up and asked okay so what can i do yes i trained in media and and all that i've worked um at this media house and i got a chance to then go to TV and family media worked as a radio presenter and there's something really interesting about and it's it, it's the power of mindset um in 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 the story I'm 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 going to share with you so when I left the village and, and came to the city even before becoming a student leader I had challenges with English communication I could write very well uh but somehow communication I, w- I wasn't very coherent like it was a bit of a problem so i remember one of my friends telling me hey karen you know when you run for office you will need to speak to students and for now only a few of us know your challenge 
with communicating coherently uh, in English. But when you do that, it means everybody will know. And so that held me back for some time um, till a point of no return where I, I said, I said, hey, God, you know what? I'm, I'm really passionate about what, this. Was it shrubs? Was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What? The, for Louis Lu Heavy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the accent, but also mm. just the coherence mm. of the English language. Right. Um, and so time came when I said, you know what? let me talk to god and i said god i want to get into student leadership but i have this challenge i'm gonna give it my all and i hope my all is best enough for me to get elected and i got elected and shortly after that i used to have a radio in my room and i'd listen to bbc radio over and over especially on sunday they used to have the um, world drama series and i would listen to the host and repeat words after the host um, see how they speak the English and, you know, just learn and read many books. And I remember one person telling me, you want to improve your English language, read as many books as you can, because the more you read, the more eloquent you become. So here's that village girl who has struggles and trying to pick herself up in terms of confidence. And I had a low self-esteem, by the way, when <laughs> I came to the city, I forgot to wow. mention that. Mm. So issues of confidence, low self-esteem, mm. communication, mm. and you know, all that. Mm. And then I get to a point where I'm a radio presenter. Mm. I had an afternoon show speaking to thousands of young people. Mm. That was big. Mm. That was big that, for that, me. That was life, I'd yeah. sit back and I'm like, wow, mm. the power of mindset. Because then my parents used to remind me that, you know what? You can be anything you want to be and you can do anything you want to do. And I believe that and I still believe that. Mm. And and yes, I have. I, I am doing that. Mm. Um, and so the power of mindset, mindset is really powerful. The paradigms we operate in, mm. if we believe we are failures or we can't or we are nothing, then we'll be nothing. Mm. But regardless of your circumstances, if you believe you're worthy, you're valuable, you can do it, you can be it, you can achieve something, you can make a difference, then believe you me, the universe will conspire and yeah. you will do that. Yeah. God will make a way. Mm. Yeah, so got into the media, mm worked a bit then moved to another media house mm. um and still also getting appointed to serve on different government boards mm. representing young people mm. Mm. um and i remember so after nakada i got appointed to serve on the board of african peer review mechanism mm -hmm. which is an entity of the african union in a number of african countries where heads of states peer review each other mm. on tenets such as good governance, mm. regular free and fair elections, mm. gender representation, media pluralism, and mm. you know, stuff like that. Mm. Um, and so this jolted me to the continental space mm. where I started engaging at the African Union level, speaking for young Africans, mm. um, doing researches on issues affecting young Africans, and mm. then championing for their representation and um, empowerment and involvement, mm. and then got up elected actually to serve as a spokesperson for young africans mm. um again that bit you know i'd look back at me coming from the village mm. and saying oh mm. wow mm. i'm now serving at uh, you know yeah. at this level making a difference mm. and then after that got uh, appointed to serve on the board of weso fund mm -hmm. representing women and mm. got a chance to travel across the country to interact uh, with women, young people, persons with disability, mm. giving the interest-free loans for them to run businesses and mm. enterprises. Mm. Then later got to serve on the board of um, Citizen Participation in Security, commonly mm. called as uh, Nyumba Kumi, mm. again, representing young people. Mm. Um, so all these opportunities. So, and this is a number of opportunities, successive opportunities mm -hmm. the key role you're playing in most of them yeah is that you're bringing in the voice of young people of young people and representing what the needs especially of the disadvantaged or yes or disenfranchised young person uh, typically would what so on top of your own um on top of your own encourage on top of you encouraging mm -hmm. Car karen and saying oh my goodness karen who used to be like this who's growing like this on top of that encouragement growing inside of you what are the common issues that you're seeing around young people that you start uh, is there a common thread 
uh, of of issues are, are you beginning to piece together like a common thread um, in in all of these issues in in both life uh, mm -hmm. in in young people in 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 development that within that time especially as you serve in all of these mm. boards and in your work then yeah uh, is there a common thread that you can pull together uh until until where you've gotten to in your story hmm let me see and as you see that um let's take a quick break and then we'll come back we just check on the battery life mm -hmm. 